he was rolling out, and then it happened in about 10 minutes, and I rang him up and told him he must have rung back 15 times that day from Queensland to, to hear the poem with someone else. I said, wait till I get down there, mate, you know, and I was doing a whole performance, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, all of them have got a little story, and the thing about the poem, you can't see the story. Like, one night, uh, New Year's Eve was a few years back, and I'd angered everybody, so they didn't want to spend New Year's Eve with me. And, uh, you know, they gave me a pocket full of eckies or something like that, and instead of staying around buying, I went up to Noosa, went up to go, going to go to a party with Josh and Tony, you see. Mm. And um, sitting outside the front of the party, talking to Josh and Tony, uh, showing them one of my latest little stories and that, and these two girls came and jumped in the back seat of the car. And one of them said, you blokes look like you're on pills. And I said, so? She said, so can we have one? And I said, oh, yeah, I suppose so. And handed them one each and she said, probably shit. And I said, well, give them back then. She said, no, I know they're not because of how quick you said, uh, give them back. So anyway, she had half of one, unbeknownst to me, the other, they both had theirs, except that she took that half, the other half, back in to the house up the road to her boyfriend and came back again and said, can I have another one? And I said, well, see this one here? That's my last one, but seeing about about four years, okay, and gave it to her. And so oh, they said, what are you going to do now? I said, oh, I don't know. They said, we want to go to Hastings Street, you know. And I said, okay, then Hastings Street. Off we go to Hastings Street. And um, I think if you line it back, that'd probably help for a second. We'll go to Hastings Street. And they were hanging out the window, going, you know, like abusing people, going past and all that, as you do on New Year's Eve. And, <laughs> and the chick in the front seat started like, um, I'll just get a chair. Started uh, leaning over towards me, getting all hot and amorous and that, and I thought, oh, beauty, you know, I didn't even mean to dose them up or anything. <laughs> this is probably happening to you. And she got more and more sideways until in the end there's pink froth coming out of her mouth and a girlfriend in the back seat saying, what are you doing to me girlfriend? I hung out the window, yelling out, he's killed me girlfriend. Oh, no. <laughs> I said, shut up. And she was saying, where do you... We were going to Mooloolaba at that stage, you see. Yeah. And um, so as soon as we got to Mooloolaba, it was the mumbler's place. I got her out of the car and walked her up and down till, you know, the walking jolted the poison apple out of her throat and she came round again. And then I drove her straight back to Noosa and dropped them where I found them. I thought, shit, I need some drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Brisbane, I thought, I know where you can go. Go to there like the gay hotel, the Wickham, Wickham yeah. Terrace, and asking people do they know we can get some drugs. They closed ranks in, in front of me. Anyone mm. that tried to help me got abused by their friends and that. And then I saw this Maori bloke and I said to him, mate, you know we can get some good drugs in it? And he said, looking at you, I reckon you wouldn't know. And I said, well, I do, but not in Brisbane. I'm not from Brisbane, otherwise I would. So, do you? And he, he said, yeah. So, this is a story, that was the start of a whole sequence of events that led to me going to jail about 12 months later. So, uh, <laughs> if you said, what do I do that New Year's Eve? I went out to check the starry sky when a sassy little hoe came sashaying by. She could see that I was a generous guy with a lump in my pants and a twinkle in my eye. I lie. I met regimental in a horrible place he had an open heart and a smiling face. The dusky skin of a gentler race, and he moved with that kind of homeboy grace. And we were in a chase for taste of base. We got some speed we didn't need, but still, I managed to get his mind to feed. I could see that the mental Reg was living on the edge, so I made myself a silent pledge to build a bridge, to give Reg the thin end of the wedge. And I was going to do it by example. But then I had a sample. Actually, I had rather more than ample. I had a lot and lost the plot, I kid you not. So I thought I'd do it by advice. Ad vice. B ice advice? That special fried rice was so nice I had to have it at least twice. In fact, I went on such a bender it was difficult to remember my gender. 
I feel like I've been put through a blender. Talk about plunder down under. When I look back now at Chandra, and no wonder I nearly tore myself asunder. And all of a sudden, I started regressing, degenerating, deteriorating. It took a while to register, but I decided I'm not going to get regimental about a new regimen. I've got to get regular so I can regrow. I've got to regroup. I've got, got to rejuvenate. I reiterate. I've got to regenerate. Otherwise, my pledge to reg ain't rigid ditch. And it is. That was in Scumbag City. See, I went down to Scumbag City to see a friend of mine. I knew that he could show me a real good time. Drugs and porn were everywhere and so was petty crime, yet still I went there time after time. I should be stuck in concrete in a bucket of lime. In Scumbag City there's a mall and in that mall you'll see them all. Liars, perverts, junkies, cheats. Fat wog bouncers with flat feet, coppers on their manic beat, whores and drag queens prowl the streets, looking for sweetmeats to eat. In Scumbag City's hard to beat. The boys in nearby nut farm stick ice in their arm. I came by with my sort of charm. I meant no body harm. I'd too like to fill me arm with ice in scumbags, nut farm. In this garden of Gethsemane, several children were sent to me. I let them down. I'm a clown. I get this moralistic frown. So of course I let them down. One of these was regimental. Funny, strange, sentimental. He's elemental, existential. Ornamental, but he's got potential. He would be gentle, but he's temperamental. There as well was bubblicious, sweetly vicious, avaricious, surreptitiously malicious. I gave that clear on which me car. She didn't drive it very far, straight round to a clown on the other side of town. That induced a momentary frown. Poor old Reg was apoplectic. He hoped I'd be apologetic. He thought the bubblicious stooged me. Thought perhaps the snatch confused me. He knew she'd used and abused me, but he never once accused me. He thought in thought superstitious. What powers has this bubblicious? She won't comply with anyone's wishes. She positively won't do dishes. Who'd want her for a missus? She lay on the floor like a marauding whore. I couldn't take it anymore. I had to get her out the door. Quick, take the car. Don't come back. I know I'll have to cop some flack, but anything's better than this. You sure know how to take the piss. I don't want you here or anywhere near. When he gone, I'll cheer, so he'd disappear. And what about Bluey's phone? She couldn't make it on her own. Enlisting his support was just her next rort. We've all got lessons we should be taught. When she came back visiting one night, crikey, she brought with her a couple of bikies. You can imagine how I felt. It's been a long time since I got me black belt. <laughs> what cruel hand has fate now dealt? When I first met her, nothing would melt in the mouth of sweetly vicious, avaricious, surreptitiously malicious, potentially pernicious, and bubblicious. But come in, my dear. What's the occasion? Am I to be the victim of a home invasion? Lucky I've still got me nunchucks. They'll smash those fucks. I'll run amok if they try their luck. <laughs> and in reserve was lesbian Sharon, L1, now F1, Formula McLaren, that's how she'd go toe-to-toe -to -toe when taking care of Yoda, bro. But come, come, my predatory little sucker fish, my darling little malicious dish, attach yourself to my neck, I'm not fucked yet. I gave you the mobile discotheque, I may look a wreck, but I'm not fucked yet. On another night... <laughs> of sweet and savage intoxication with senses reeling and pulses racing, I was led to the door by Aurelia, the whore, who humbly, timidly begged me for more. Come again, please, sir, come again to my door. I will, my dear, I fervently swore. And she was there the night of my arrest, and as they dragged me handcuffed from that place, a stricken look upon her face is what I'll remember best. It stirred emotions in my breast. And the look on the face of my good friend Reg moved me to renew my former pledge. I lay on the floor of that watch her cell. I loved my friends, I loved them well. And I love them even if I have to live in hell. <laughs>